Force Vector Edition. Questions to ponder. How do you add force vectors? How do you break down vectors into components? And how do you use those components to find the resultant vector? To start with, let's take a simple example here where we have uh, two force vectors that are already uh, in, on the horizontal and vertical, uh, in the horizontal and vertical directions. So F1 right here is three newtons and it is all in a positive horizontal direction. So that would be, or X direction. And then we have F2, which is in the vertical direction here, or Y direction. If we wanted to add these two vectors together, what we do is we usually leave the longer of the two vectors alone or the one that's on a horizontal or vertical axis and we grab the other vector, this one, and we pop, pull it off of there and place it with the tail of it on the tip of uh, the vector we left alone. So it's going to be right here as the gray vector shows down below here. Once we do that, we can see that these are our two vectors that we've added together and the resultant vector will go from the tail of our original vector to the tip of the uh, vector we added tail to tip here. So uh, this is our resultant vector right here, resultant force vector. So that being the case, we can see that this is a right triangle now. And being a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the length of this hypotenuse. And that's how we find out the magnitude of that resultant vector using that hypotenuse equation here for Pythagorean theorem. So I take the x component and square it, 3 newtons squared, and then the vertical component, y component, 1.73 newtons, and square it, and then take the square root, and we get 3.46 newtons, and that is the amount of this resultant force vector. Now, uh, we also need to know the direction, since uh, uh, we want to find the direction of this force vector. We were given originally the vertical, horizontal and vertical components. In other words, with this right triangle here, we were given the opposite side and the adjacent side. And so opposite over adjacent, I remember, is the tangent. So since tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, I can use that to solve for the angle theta. I have to take the inverse tangent of both sides. And so when I take the inverse tangent of both sides to solve for theta, I get the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. This is a very handy equation in vector addition to solve for the uh, angle. Coming down here, we can uh, plug in to our two different forces, the opposite side here of 1.73 newtons over the adjacent side of 3 newtons, and then take the tan inverse tangent of that ratio, and we end up with 30 degrees. So our angle right here would be 30 degrees. So our overall vector is 3.46 newtons long at an angle of 30 degrees. And this is how you represent the overall vector here, uh, 3.46 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. Now for a little uh, harder problem here with adding force vectors. Notice that these two vectors uh, have a little bit of a horizontal component and a little bit of vertical component each. And uh, so we're going to see how, do we, how we can add these two vectors together. And basically the strategy goes like this. First of all, overall vector addition, let's uh, look at how that looks visually. So if we pull vector F2 off of here and place the tail of it on the tip of vector force vector 1 here, that's where the gray uh, vector is here, we can see that then the resultant vector will be this blue vector going from the start of F1 to the end of F2 right here. Now, the way we handle this uh, algebraically to, uh, to determine what this force vector is as far as its magnitude and its angle uh, is we have to take each of these two vectors and break them into their horizontal and vertical components. We'll do that first. Once we break them into their horizontal and vertical components, then we add up the horizontal parts and we add up the vertical parts and then we, uh, with those all added back together, we use the Pythagorean theorem and the uh, inverse tangent to find our overall <coughs> or uh, resultant force 
and our overall angle uh, angle right here. So with that in mind, let's uh, get, get busy breaking these vectors into components. So starting with F1 here, we can break it into its two components. It's got a horizontal component right here and a vertical component. And because it's 45 degrees, we know that those two components should be equal when we're done. So to start off with the horizontal part right here of this right triangle, that's the adjacent side. And since we know the hypotenuse, uh, then uh, we can solve for the adjacent side by using the cosine. So F1, the horizontal component, F1x, is equal to 22.4 newtons times the cosine of 45 degrees, and that gives us 15.84 newtons. I'm going to keep this extra significant digit until we get down to our final answer. So uh, the vertical component, as we suspected, at 45 degrees, 22.4 newtons times the sine of 45 degrees is the same, 15.84 newtons, as the horizontal component. So these two are the same uh, amount. Now to look at our components of our force 2 here. Uh, now that angle is 120 degrees. And so we'll see that the horizontal component should end up being negative right here. And uh, that again is the cosine. So F2 at X is 10 newtons times the cosine of 120 degrees, which is negative 5 newtons. And that makes sense uh, since this angle will be 60 degrees if that's 0.5 uh, there. The vertical component here uh, is 10 newtons times the sine of 120 degrees, or 8.66 newtons right there. These components we've actually laid out down below here. The horizontal component, the 15.84 or newtons for F1 is this red vector, and the vertical for F1 is this green vector, also 15.84 newtons. The horizontal for F2 is that negative 5 newtons here, and the vertical is the positive 8.66 newtons there. Now that we have our components, and we've broken these two vectors into their two different components here and here, we can uh, add up all the horizontal components. So when we do that, we take this 15.84 newtons plus, plus a negative right here. We pull this off and go tail to uh, tip there, and we take away that uh, negative 5 newtons, or take away the 5 newtons, and that leaves us with this 10.84 newtons in the horizontal direction. The vertical components we bring over here and we add together, and so when we add those two together we get 24.5 newtons for the vertical component of our resultant vector. Now we end up with our right triangle here, where these two are on this side, and uh, we can use Pythagorean theorem right here with those summed components to uh, find out our overall force here. So we take 10.84 newtons squared, that's our horizontal part, plus the 24.5 newtons squared, that was our vertical com uh, added up components, and take the square root of that and we get 26.8 newtons. That's how long this is. And that, that makes sense because this, these green vectors added together were 24.5. So if I rotated this over here, we can see that it would be a little bit more. So that makes some sense there. Our uh, angle, we're going to use the angle beta here uh, as our symbol for our angle. Our angle is the inverse tangent of the uh, vertical components divided by the horizontal components here. So the inverse tangent of 24.5 newtons divided by the 10.84 newtons uh, is equal to 66 degrees. And that looks about right since that's 90 degrees. Uh, that looks pretty close with the 66 degrees. And that's quite a bit of work, but that's how the job is done when you're adding two vectors that are at, uh, that have different components. That's how we get the resultant vector. Again, breaking them into components, adding up the horizontal and vertical components, and then uh, mixing them back together using the Pythagorean theorem and the inverse tangent. So hopefully uh, you uh, have a pretty good grasp of how you add uh, force vectors and really any two vectors uh, together.
and hopefully you can answer these questions. How do you add force vectors? How do you break down vectors into components? And how do you use components to find the resultant vector? Scratches parting thought. And good luck as you strive for continuous improvement.